Hey, good morning. How are you doing today? I'm fine, sir. How come you are so early today? Hey, we got a new project. I want you to create a few screens. This is for a very important customer. We have very less time. We need you to complete everything in one week. One week seems to be very less. And I don't know what is the requirement. See, we need to create a small application for users to make entries for the available products, track the orders, enter the payment information and display the data and... Basically the application is all about saving new records, editing them, updating them and displaying them on the screen. Hey, wait. No. I know you spend lots of time using Facebook in office. I need it tomorrow or you can send it today. I will throw you out otherwise. Sir, would you be providing one more resource for me to complete this? No. We are already paying you so much. You need to complete it alone. No. Please help me. How can I do that? All our simple operations. Reuse the existing code. But, I need four weeks. Please help me. Honestly I have no idea. But few guys in my labs have worked on this. I heard someone was talking about the dynamic data websites. And Neil, Karthik and Pavan of NowLab team from MISA seems to be working on this. Talk to them. I have to check my emails now. Start writing the code. Your time starts now. Everything you have told me is true, but I do not know what to do with this information. I am still lost. You haven't been any help at all. See you tomorrow, and with the code. Bye. Hey, can any of you please help me? This manager seems to be crazy. Gives lot of work. I am stressed. What is this dynamic data website all about? Did you say something about me? No sir, I was thinking about the NoLabs team. <laughs> okay, you may have to come this weekend. I will talk about that project later. Bye again. No. <laughs> In most of your web applications, you do the same things repeatedly, like inserting a record into the database, updating the details, or listing the records on the screen. Even to create simple web pages, we do write the code always, and we write the same code. We spend a lot of time on these recurring tasks. What if there was a solution to generate these functionalities automatically but also with an ability to customize it and extend it further? Yes, this is possible with SP.NET Dynamic Data website. So, what is Dynamic Data? SP.NET Dynamic Data provides a framework that enables you to quickly build a functional data-driven web application based on a link queue to SQL or Entity Framework data model. In simple terms, it gives you the ability to create websites from the database schema. You create the database structure and the framework automatically generates the screens for you with all basic functionalities. So, now what are the benefits of it? Automatic CRUD in fact, this is a major functionality. Usually you write lot of code to save, delete, update and display the records and even to do paging and customizations. But with dynamic data websites, these functionalities are already created by the framework. You can concentrate more on the business logic now rather than writing code to make normal crude operations work. It's really quick. You do configurations rather than writing code if you just need basic functionalities. You can save a lot of time which you used to waste earlier by developing new code for the common data operations. Imagine how much time it was taking for you to develop an application with just 20 screens. It's very easy to use. Just with a few button clicks, you will be able to generate fully functional web applications. Any developer can easily understand and use it. Also, Microsoft has good documentation for developers on using dynamic data and for customizing it. 
I will share a few links at the end for your reference. Customization. This is an interesting part. All web applications won't be simple just with a few crude operations. Most often you want to do customizations. Dynamic data websites created are customizable. You can extend these websites further. You can write your code and do all the things which you do normally when creating any ASP.NET website. Smart validations. Even the validations are automatically made to the controls in your forms. Based on the nullable fields, length and the data type, validations are automatically done. You can add extra validations required which is specific to your screen. For example, if a column in the database table is limited to 50 characters in length and if a column is marked as not nullable, a required field validator control is automatically enabled for the column. You can apply other metadata and take further control over display and validation. These are few interesting things about the dynamic data website. Now, let's see what's the idea behind it. Dynamic data website actually uses a technique called scaffolding to generate the pages dynamically with the help of the built-in template files. Dynamic data uses URL routing to match and handle requests. The scaffolding mechanism infers the view and the table a user wishes to see from the URL which he is requests. The benefit of using the routing mechanism is that the URL requested does not have to match the physical path in the application. That's interesting, right? A point to mention here is, by default, the scaffolding mechanism is turned off. Enabling the scaffolding mechanism should be done carefully because it poses a security risk as it can expose the whole data model for display, edit, insert and delete capabilities. Instead of exposing the whole data model and hiding the tables that do not have to be exposed, you can expose only the ones required by the application. Looks like Microsoft has taken into account few common security risks. Okay, let me talk about the architecture now. Dynamic data gets the schema information or metadata from the data model that represents database entities as CLR types. Dynamic data architecture contains three layers and let me show one by one. Firstly, the presentation layer. Presentation layer contains the elements that are used to create beautiful interfaces for displaying and editing data entities. Next is the data layer. Data layer contains the data model that represents the database entities as CLR types. It also has a data source mapping layer which contains elements that are part of CLR but are used by dynamic data. These elements are technologies such as link you to SQL and Ediva.NET Entity Framework that are used to generate data models. Let me go in detail about these layers and the elements. Page Templates Basically, page templates are web pages that render data from tables within your database. Dynamic data includes page templates for different views of data such as listing a table, displaying master detail tables, or editing data. It's like uh, Microsoft has created few common pages for crude operations which can be used with any database. Next, Entity Templates. Entity Templates enables you to customize the UI for the data entity such as a row or a table. This provides more flexibility than customizing individual data fields and mostly useful when you want to create custom UI and apply it to default or custom page templates. Field Templates Field Templates are user controls that render the UI for individual data fields. By default, Dynamic Data selects a field template based on the data type of the field that is being displayed. For example, to display boolean data, dynamic data uses a boolean field template. 
to display text data, dynamic data uses a text field template and so on. Now filter templates. Filter templates are user controls that render the UI for data filtering which lets the user select the table rows to display based on a column value. For example, you can display all the rows that contain a certain category. That is all about the presentation la layer elements. Now, let's talk about the data layer elements. ASP.NET Dynamic supports LinkQ to SQL and ADWA.NET Entity Framework models. Dynamic data uses these types to query the database and to create, read, update and delete data. Data models provide an easy way to integrate custom data validation and business logic rules. You will understand this when you see running it live. Let's see a few usage scenarios. Few common usage scenarios are, you can use dynamic data websites for creating feedback and inquiry forms. You can use it for applications which you use inside your organization. You can use dynamic data website also to create small websites which just requires crude operations. You can use dynamic data websites also for creating websites which rely less on the complex business logic. I think it's too much of a theoretical explanation now. So let's create a small dynamic data website without writing any code. Dynamic data websites can be created right from .NET Framework version 3.5 with Visual Studio 2008. In this demonstration, I'll be using Visual Studio 2010 editor with SQL Server 2008 as database server. I'll be using Northwind database for this demonstration. Now, I have opened the Visual Studio 2010. Go to the file menu. Click on the new website. Under the install templates, you can see two templates for dynamic data are available. As I had mentioned earlier, dynamic data websites can be created for two models, data entities or for LinkQ2 SQL. At first, I did not find any difference between the two. But later I came to know that uh, entity version of uh, dynamic data uses the entity data source as opposed to LinkQ data source. In this example, I'll be using LinkQ to SQL model for creating dynamic data site. Select it, enter the name and location for website. Select the language of your choice. Click on OK. Wait for few seconds. Now Visual Studio in the background is creating a website for you with a built-in template. The next step is to add a data source to the project. I am using SQL Server 2008. Go to your Server Explorer. Right click on the data connections. Click on the add connection. Let me enter the details here. I'll choose the Windows Authentication. I'll select the database as a Northwind. Click on the OK button now. 